Beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and in today's video, we're going to be going over some advanced resound design techniques. It could work for drum and bass, it could work for dubstep, it could work for progressive house or tech house. These are things I've learned creating a new drum and bass pack called Odyssey, which should be out by the end of this month. So, hopefully, you guys can check that out over at evilsounds.com. And with that being said, let's get started with this video. Sample the Reese down. Now, bouncing down your Reese can give you a lot of pros the first one being is that it's a lot easier to execute the movement that a lot of people look for in a reese when it comes to drum and bass tracks and what i mean by that is the idea that when you play your reese here versus you want that movement the problem is when you're in serum it's very hard to get it unless you know what you're doing with it and if you want a white sound like this it's very hard to get that movement as you don't have the notes overlapping down the center of the mix okay so with utilizing a bounce down version putting it into a sampler it's a lot easier to achieve that sound but now here's a negative about this it can also sound a little cheesy now the next pro is the fact that we can do a lot of really cool stuff we have the movement so now we can run a lot of really dope processing effects to get something like sorts and then we can do cool stuff like From there, we can also make this a lot more punchier if needed, so no attack, and we can start the Reese maybe anywhere we want. You can tell there's still a little bit of yeah, so let's get rid of this. We can add a pitch. Okay, so we can use a lot of these cool little features in, that are found inside of the Ableton sampler. Now, the debate there would be, oh, you can just do that in Serum with some pitch envelopes and whatnot. Nah, San. Well, yeah, you can, but there's a different tone when you do it this way, and that's what I'm trying to cement. Now, the last thing, and this is probably the most powerful one because I find this a lot of fun, is going to be to utilize the FM section that the Ableton sampler provides, which is probably one of the most underrated, overpowered, things that i am surprised not a lot of people do and if they do they're just not letting people know because they want to keep that little secret to themselves okay uh the way is that one we can activate the fm sampler inside of serum and the cool thing is is that we have all these waves that we can apply to this sample that we have but when you check it out we have the course here which is the fm ratio but here are some cool little things that we can do okay i'm gonna get rid of this lfo <laughs> First off, I can do cool stuff like that, right? All right, and let's get rid of this amp for now. Okay, so this is pretty cool because... So let's assume we have a trap. And, I mean, you get the idea there, right? I, I, I don't think I'm... Yeah. So it's cool that you can activate that. You can go really high. Okay, yeah, blowing some ears there with that, but you have really cool kind of capabilities. We can go with some. Okay, uh, I would probably use a sub for that if needed, but again, there's a lot of cool stuff. We can also implement pitch bends a lot easier by just saying, oh, we want this, decay. Uh, again, uh, these are the benefits you get from sampling. Um, I'm not going to say you can process further because that's a total lie. Um, but again, this is a technique that if you're making drum and bass, you should probably get on. And if you're not in Ableton, well, there's another reason why it's the best star in the world. Right. Number two, singular detunement for movement. Okay, now, one of the things that I noticed by going on Reddit, because I usually go on there to find out cool videos to make, is there's always this damn question that comes with respaces and always... I always put a basic respace from a track and they're like, how do they get it to sound that way? The movement, uh, which to a lot of people, they will say, oh, you know, it's just movement with LFOs and whatnot. But the movement most people like about Reese's is going to be this very singular movement. Now, it's the one we created over here, but we can still do it inside of Serum. It's just that we need two identical sauce or two identical wavetables that are going to be starting at the same phase and each are going to go at different speeds which means different pitch now this doesn't mean it needs to be by a lot just a bit so that we can hear both saws or both wavetables spreading out from each other and overlapping creating the movement that we listen to so the way we do this is again pitch is equal to speed when it comes to these guys so if we have let's say here uh these saws we're going to go to three octave hit c3 
One of the debates that comes up a lot in my YouTube videos, comments from the scientists over there in the basement, um, is why don't you just do this and you could just do this. You know, you could just... And then you can make this mono and you... Okay, um, we'll, we'll put two just to be fair. And while it is fair, it does sound pretty good. The only thing I have to say to that question is always, number one, I can be a little bit more precise about the way that I'm going to go about this. It also sounds a lot fatter and a lot cleaner for some reason going this route, if you notice. So um, I always do this. Now, the, the technique comes from the idea that I have this damn synth over here, a mate chart. But, you know, as a sound designer, that's what I do my living. Uh, that's my living, my main source of income. I was like, I need to buy analog synths because what kind of sound designer am I if I don't have one? But buying an analog synth opened the doors up to a lot of techniques that I wouldn't have known, especially the way that they're pre-routed. Some of the Moogs and uh, Dave Smith uh, synths. So that's one of the tricks that I learned. It's just, why not just do this? Like the analog world. For some reason, it sounds better and it makes the synth sound more analog. And when I show this to the commoner producer that, you know, it's like a weekender, like uh, has a real job and is working all the time. Whenever they hear this, they think analog for some reason. So there you go. Easier detunement. Damn. Route your note modulation to your LFO rate. Now, this is the part of the video where I have to keep promoting the new Odyssey pack coming out at the end of this month, guys. But this is a preset from it. No one questions you for going to work, so don't question me now. But the idea here is, is that we're going to be using this pad to implement this technique. The idea is, is that we can use the note feature here inside of Ableton. Find the LFO if you're using presets or you made your own that is creating the movement. I believe it's going to be LFO 2. So from there, we're going to route it here. We're going to get rid of the BPM. Now, from there, the idea here, as we route our note there, is the fact that now, the higher I play, the higher the value is allowed. You can see how it's moving now. From there, if you're going to be playing from C3 to, let's say, C4, then from there, we can create some drastic changes, like so, for you to kind of get what you want. You know, without this modulation, it sounds like this. It doesn't care what note you're on, but applying this, you can also just, again, activate. EQ before distortion. Now, the drum and bass guys might know this as filtering, and it's probably the right term for it, but I just always tell people EQ before distortion to accentuate and create movement. Now, this technique is probably one of the more hype ones because hardstyle guys use it a lot as well to create their kicks and stuff. Uh, but the idea is, is, again, here we have this patch, which sounds like this. Okay, utilizing, again, the note modulation technique. But from there, here we have, as you can see, this filter creating movement this bell EQ but from here again I can go a little that is how it's gonna help with that now here we're gonna get rid of this now from here I might just say you know what we're gonna go here and then maybe a notch which is a very popular thing to do in a drum and bass and neuro stuff okay and from there pitch bends for sex now pitch bends are probably one of the things you guys know as the corny thing to do in edm like ba, ba, bam they used to do it a lot in prog house uh but pitch bends can actually make really cool effects for your re-spaces you can do a lot of cool stuff now there's a couple of techniques within this technique for the last one so you can add even three more to the video if you wanted to um the first thing is a lot of people overlook this pitch bend range um a lot of people just leave it always at the default one which is two to two which means we can go up two semitones and two like so personally me what i teach people is to put this to a desired place they want to go to with the bed as you can see and we can also make this go negative five like the perfect fifth and 
and you can do a lot of skipping around that way so it makes life a little easier with the pitch bend ranges the other thing we can do is route our lfo2 to the course pitches of our sounds i'm pretty sure you can do it with the master tune maybe as well i'm not too sure maybe you guys can let me know in the comments down below with that but here i'm going to say oh 2st uh 2st that just means up to two and now we have that and then from there i always recommend you guys save your mod uh your lfo shapes as you can see from there this one we can go maybe a little higher <laughs> and maybe a little like yeah let's go maybe 26 now it's a damn hoover not all re-spaces need to be made with saws and this is the last one I'm going to tell you guys. And again, most of these techniques are simple because when you understand why you're doing it, then you finally get it and you don't need to hell marry a lot of stuff. But with a lot of people's sauce seems to be the reese. But again, you can get away with using other stuff because you understand you need two similar wave tables that are moving at different speeds to create that whole movement effect. To give you guys an example here that's different, uh, we have two wavetables called Reese Mess. I'm not going to mess around with the wavetable positions. These are going to be pretty much sine waves that have been filtered, to be honest. Um, but if you hear it, I'm not really doing anything. But now I could do that. And you get this sort of movement. It's not as pronounced as the saw, but once we distort it, you can hear the movement okay it's the same theory it just sounds different and honestly this would be a little bit more preferable because one i can maybe distort it with this and the other cool thing we can do with this as well is we can use another and then have that but now we can create width as well and then maybe distort and let's not blow here and then here we Create some of the strongest width you can possibly get when you pan left and right with similar but different sounds. A chorus for movement. Ah, that makes the sound worse. Let's just do that. Maybe a pre. Yeah, F it. Let's go like that. for fun anyways guys those have been the techniques that i wanted to show you guys in today's video if you found any of them helpful make sure to hit like leave a comment down below on videos you would like to see but other than that you guys take care much love and you guys have a great rest of your day